Annette. Bonjour, Daniello. Venez avec moi. Non, merci. Fait trop chaud pour aller. D'accord. Merci. C'est là. We were like this, he and I, as close as I'm standing to you now. He had this pickaxe, understand? He was going to brain me with it. What did you do then, Monsieur Salon? I went for help. What else could a man do in a situation such as that? Yeah, what else indeed? Oh, the ferry. I'm sorry. There is some trouble with the motor. Well, how long will it take? I don't know. It's difficult to say. Give me a cognac, will you? It is not good to drink cognac, monsieur, in the heat of the day. Headache. Monsieur already has a headache. Your health. 
And yours, monsieur. Another. Monsieur is a tourist. Monsieur is not a tourist. But you are English. No, American. You have no car? I have no nothing. How did you get to saint Giron? I walked. How long is Monsieur staying in saint Giron? So this is where you're hiding. Lucky I found you. Lucky for who? If you finish sulking, perhaps we can get on. Have a drink, Grace. I don't want a drink. Are you coming? No. I'll leave without you. That's the basic idea, Grace. I hadn't that got through to you. You can't stay here. Miles from any damn place. How are you going to get anywhere without me? I'm a big boy now, Grace. Then start behaving like one. Oh, I'm trying to. That's why I'm not coming any further. Not with you, anyway. Besides, I like it here. I've always wanted to visit... Um, saint Giron. Yeah, saint Giron, jewel of the Provence. All right, if you want to be pig-headed, you can. But I warn you, this time I'm really leaving. Oh, I don't believe you. I shan't be waiting in Nice when you come looking for me. Bon voyage. Give my regards to your father. Ah, but I'm a very big boy now. <laughs> Life. Do you uh, have rooms here, Mademoiselle? Yes, but you'll have to ask my stepmother. Where is she? She's out at present, but she'll be back shortly. I'll wait. I'm going, Annette. Uh... The young lady will be quite safe, officer. I'm a confirmed misogynist, as you must have gathered. Well, in that case, good day, monsieur. Annette? Goodbye, Mr. Sano. nothing much to paint around here. Oh, no, on the contrary. From what I've seen of it, it's very beautiful. Well, in a stark sort of way. Here you are. Thank you. Monsieur was inquiring about a room. I told him he would have to see you. Oh. Um, I'm Madame Bena. I understand you were asking about a room. Yes, do you have one free? Will your wife be coming back? Uh, she's not my wife. She won't be coming back. No, I'm quite alone. Oh. Well, yes, we have a room, but it's not here. It's on the other side. All right. Annette, monsieur will be staying. Will you excuse me? Mm -hmm. Is the jukebox really out of order? Yes. Like the ferry. <laughs> monsieur would like another drink? No, thank you. Um, 
I'm going to be needing somebody to show me around. You know, the local beauty spots and things like that. Are you really a good painter? No. Well, you. I knew a painter once. He wasn't very good either. Ooh, you're avoiding the question, mademoiselle. What was the question? Well, I was asking your stepdaughter if she'd be able to show me around San Jerome. Annette, uh, Gilles has the ferry ready. Would you go across and fix Monsieur's room? All right, Yves. Did I say the wrong thing? Oh, no. No, it's just that uh, Annette never does anything without asking me first. But of course she can show you around. We'll both do it. Would you like a drink? Yeah, I'll have a beer. Mm. Will you join me? No, thank you. Not now. You uh, give me a screwdriver, I'll fix this thing. I'm an electronic wizard. She drove through the village with a formidable speed. That's my girl. Ah, she's very beautiful for an English woman. I agree. Monsieur did not mind her taking the automobile. Oh, it was hers, Monsieur. Ah, she's rich too. Yes, yeah, she's very rich. Beautiful and rich. As you said, Monsieur, that's life. What's that? I'm not so happy, eh, Madame Bena? Thank you, monsieur. I'm on duty. And when on duty, I allow myself three drinks only. It is better. Uh, but I must go now. I think I'll get some air, too. Good night, monsieur Farrell. Good night. No, don't. I brought you a nightcap. Oh, thank you. He wanted to lock you up this morning. He thought you were a little mad. <laughs> no. Well, you're an American, so everything is explained. Is your room comfortable? Oh, yes, thank you. And uh, was your dinner all right? My dinner was excellent. 
Do you worry about all your guests this way? You're the first one we've had since... for four years. Maybe all that'll change now that I've fixed the jukebox. Uh, could I borrow you for a couple of minutes? Yes, of course. Oh, well, Annette. Yes? Will you please tell Gilles that Monsieur would like to cross? All right. Good night, Annette. Good night, Monsieur. Thank you very much for the dance. Uh, Monsieur Farrell. Yes? You wouldn't think that Annette was already 19, would you? I haven't given it any thought. She's such a child, really. Impressionable, you understand? Yes, Mrs. Vayner, I think I do. Good night. Good night. I hope you manage to sleep in this heat. sleep. Why are you awake? Well, it's hot. It's always hot here at night. Would you like a drink? Yes, all right. Cognac? Yes, thank you. Here alone, Mr. Farrell? I don't know why. I was just wondering. Tell me, what do you do around here? Don't you find it dull? Oh, no. My work keeps me busy. And then there is riding, swimming. Alone? It does get lonely sometimes. There must be something seriously wrong with the young men of Saint Jerome. What? Excuse me, please. I'll only be a moment. <laughs> That's 40 francs you owe me, Jeff. I know. <laughs> One more game? Okay. What about tomorrow? I don't know, Jeff. Look, I'm not asking you to elope with me. I just want you to come on a picnic. All right. What are you doing up? I couldn't sleep. Suppose you go back to bed and try again. All right, Eve. Thank you for keeping me company, Jeff. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. I'm sorry about this, Mr. Farrell. Don't be. I couldn't sleep either. I saw a prowler. I think Annette did, too. She was nervous, and she wanted somebody to sit up with her till you came home. A prowler? Just after you went out. Oh. Oh, there are a lot of gypsies here on the Camargue. They're harmless. Mr. Farrell, you shouldn't let Annette take advantage of your good nature. <laughs> Shall we?
Hello there. Hello. Hello. I brought you lunch. Where's Annette? She was busy. She asked me to apologize. You shouldn't have bothered. It was no bother. Feels like there's enough in here for ten people. Will you join me? I should be getting back. All right, then. But not here. I know a much better place. Up there. More wine? No, thank you. This is a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. We used to come here a lot. I'm not surprised. Annette loved it. Her father would... Go on. <laughs> no, it's not important. No, Annette's father... Well, stop me if I'm being nosy, Mrs. Baynard, but there is a Mr. Baynard. Oh, yes. There is a Mr. Baynard. And uh, he won't mind you renting me this room. We're a registered pension, Mr. Farrell. Why should he mind? Well, just you and Annette there. He won't know. Oh, he's not coming back soon. You must have read about it, even in the American papers. They called it the settling killing. Settling. It's Baynard, George Baynard. He's my husband, and it's father. Wasn't it something to do with her? Mm-hmm. That man he killed, Johnny Earle. He picked up Annette on her way home from school. She was 15. He assaulted her. George got hold of him before the police did. You see, people here believe that a man should be able to settle his own differences without interference from the law. <laughs> George was a hero in their eyes. It was the Janiello family that had to leave. Pretty bloody crime. Mm-hmm. It was so terrible that they found George insane. Was he insane? Well, at the moment, he must have been. But it was an insanity of rage. Now I think he's as sane as you and I. Where is he now? He's in an asylum, just outside Avignon. I go and see him every fortnight. That can't be a very pleasant experience. It's horrible. He just sits and looks at me. He never asks about anything, except about Annette. He just sits there and looks. He hates me, I think, for being outside while he's locked up. Well, it's no good talking about it. The situation exists, and there's nothing that can be done. I must be going home now. I really enjoyed our picnic. I can't tell you how much. Then we'll do it again. I'd like it. Very much. Do you right, Mr. Farrell? If I have to. Because I'd like to show you the Camargue as it should be seen. From horseback. How are you getting on with your painting? Oh, I'm still waiting for inspiration. <laughs> well, like most things, if you wait long enough, it will happen eventually. See you tonight. More coffee? Yes, thank you. 
That was one of the best meals I've ever eaten. You're an incredible cook, Annette. <laughs> Thank you. Eve told me. Where is Eve? I don't know. She often goes away like this without telling anyone. May I ask you something, Jeff? What? When you first decided to stay here, I mean, without having made any plans, wasn't anyone who might wonder where you are worry about you? Well, the only person who worries about me is me. <laughs> but you must have some relation, a family. No, no family, no relations. Well, what about that girl? Grace? Are you lovers? Do you mean are we in love or are we lovers? I'm sorry, I'll tell you about Grace. She has a very rich father. Anything he wants, he buys. And she was brought up that way. She sees a thing she wants, she asks the price, and most times she gets it. But not this time. Me? Oh, it's not as dramatic as that. She wanted to go to Nice, I didn't. That seems a small thing to disagree on. Well, I used it as an excuse, really. In London, Grace blinded me with her reflected glory. Oh, I thought I was in love with her. Probably because everybody else was after her. But a week of Grace exclusively is too much, I'm afraid. <laughs> and I wouldn't have minded going to Nice as it happens. But not with Grace. <laughs> Definitely not with Grace. What are you going to do now? Stay here for a while. Oh, I really am a painter. At least that's how I make my living. I'd like to paint you. Why? Because you're a very beautiful young lady. Where are you going? I must go away. Help. Good evening. Good evening. Oh. Annette has cooked your dinner. Yes. She's a wonderful cook. I'm kidding her. She said you taught her. Oh. She flatters me. I promised to show you the Camargue on horseback. What about tomorrow? Yes, I'd like that. Good. Good night, Mr. Farrell. Good night. Thank you, Annette, for the dinner. You're a wonderful rider. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. There isn't much else to do over here. I'll race you to the sea. but my horse had other ideas. <laughs> oh, you come prepared. Of course. Is this where you come on those occasions when you disappear? Yes. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? Miles and miles without another soul. Meaning you um, like to be alone? Sometimes. Don't you? Not very often. Bearing that in mind, am I invited again? <laughs> of course. If you make yourself useful. Here.
No, I don't think so. I'm going to bed. Well, I'll come up with you. Makes me so happy. I feel I've come alive again thanks to you. Oh, if only. A... If only what? No, nothing, nothing real. Hey, come on, tell me. <laughs> it's tomorrow. Oh, I dread tomorrow. What about tomorrow? I have to visit George. Oh, I see. Oh, Dad. You don't know how awful it's been. Oh, I can guess. And now it's going to be so much worse. Because of me? Yes, but it's not your problem. Oh, I want your problems to be mine now. <laughs> Oh, it may sound selfish, but I love you to say that. Just someone to worry about me again. To think about me. I'd like to come with you tomorrow. I'd like that. Not now. You want to go home? No. But let's get away from here. Okay, come on then. You drive. Let's not talk about it anymore. Don't be silly, Eve. If it's the only way, we've got to do it just that way. If I had thought you were going to take it seriously, I would never have told you what he said. Well, you did tell me, and I am taking it seriously. But we are breaking the law, apart from everything else. Well, the law's been broken before. The only considerations are moral ones. But they count. Well, of course they do. Isn't this whole thing one of morals? You won't come away with me as long as your husband's locked up. I, on the other hand, am not going to give you up. And he won't give you up unless we help him escape from prison. It is not a prison. Well, it's an asylum. And he isn't insane. You told me yourself the doctors were considering transferring him to a regular prison. They wouldn't do that if he wasn't all right. 
If we were contemplating turning loose a homicidal maniac, I'd agree with you, but we're not. We're helping a man to start a new life. He'll make it sound the only thing to do. Well, that's because it is. Now, where is he going to go? I don't know, and I don't care. Well, what about Annette? He wants her to join him as soon as he's settled. Then all we have to do is pick him up as he comes over the wall. Mm -hmm. He's got everything arranged inside. One of the male nurses is going to help him escape. We just have to take him to the boat. And I really don't see what we're arguing about. Unless you don't want to be free. You know it's not true, darling, don't you? Yes, of course I do. All that's left is to see if Annette will agree. Of course I agree. I'll go with him wherever it is. I wasn't going to stay here anyway. Do you think I've enjoyed watching you too? You're married to my father. What you have been doing is a crime against him and against God. Whichever will, this comes out. You'll have to pay for it. Eve is young, Annette. It isn't right for her to spend the rest of her life alone. Why not? Wasn't father supposed to? When is it going to happen? Your father will tell me next time I go to see him. As soon as he'll safely away, he'll send you a cable to tell you where to meet him. What's going to happen to this place? I think I'll sell it. It's not yours to sell. But it will be. Your father's going to make it over to me. When I sell, I'll keep half the money. And the other half, I send to you and to him, wherever you are. We don't need the money, Eve. You can send it all to them. You take a man's wife, Mr. Vern, but not his money. I haven't taken anything, Annette. Your father and Eve have nothing for one another anymore. These things happen. It takes a man like you to start them. Don't worry. Should be all right. No, darling, not tonight. It's my... Nothing. I'm just tired. I think I'll go to bed. well over an hour late. What could have happened? I mean, there or anything. We can't stay here any longer. Come on. Just a few more minutes. Eve, I don't know very much about these things, but one thing I do know, they work to a timetable, and when something goes wrong, that's the end of it. He'll tell you all about it when you see him again. Come on. something had gone wrong. Let's go. Where to? Marseille. Here, five. How long before they miss you? In the morning. Eight o'clock. You'll be at sea by then. Yes. Do you know yet where you are going? Yes. Where? You will hear from me as arranged.
Is this all right? Mm-hmm. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Eve. Good luck. Have we done the right thing, Jeff? It's too late to worry about that now. Then there is absolutely nothing more you can tell me, Madame Benin. Nothing, Inspector. When you last visited your husband, he gave you no sign that he planned anything like this. Hello. Good morning. Ah, you are Mr. Farrell. Yes, I am. Inspector Etienne from Marseille. How do you do? I would like to ask you, Monsieur Farrell, if you saw or heard anything unusual last night. Unusual in what way? Unusual. Anything that was not uh, customary? Oh, I don't think so. Why? A dangerous man escaped from a mental asylum last night. We have reason to believe he may come here. Here? What on earth for? Why do Americans always answer questions with questions of their own simply, Monsieur Farrell? Did you or did you not notice anything unusual last night? No, I did not. Madame Benin, you will tell me if you see or hear from your husband? No, oh, yes, of course, Inspector. And you, Mademoiselle? Yes. Well, there's one more thing which may be of importance. I have been asking about one man, Georges Benin. In fact, there are two men in whom we are interested. One of the male nurses at the asylum disappeared last night also. It may be that he assisted in the escape. It may be that he is merely absent without leave. In any case, you will keep me informed. Oh, y yes, Inspector. Thank you, Madame. Monsieur. I didn't say anything about anyone else last night. Well, maybe the man just ran away. Where are you going? I'm going to Arca to do some shopping. Well, I'll drive. All right. Oh, look at these over here. Oh, they're sweet. Over here. A kilo of those, please. Tell me, what would you have done if I hadn't come along? <laughs> Strange as it may seem to you, I always can find someone to carry my past. Yeah. I'm just a workhorse. <laughs> Take this to the car. I'm going to buy a present. What? We'll see. Get in. But the show Forget it. I'll explain later. That's why he didn't meet us at the place he was supposed to. He had to get that in a car without us seeing. What are we going to do? Oh, I don't know yet. The police? We can't. 
can't. We're accessories. We helped them escape, and this is a direct result of what we did. What then? Got to get rid of it. Where? Here. Jeff, look. Get in the car quick. You drive. What about? I'll get rid of him tonight. the key. It's very rusty. I'll get the car. I'll go and see what he wants. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. What is it? He's the only one who could have sent them. The driver said they were ordered by phone this morning. That means he couldn't have got on the boat. Maybe there's something he wants more. What? Annette? That was arranged. No, you. He agreed to let me go. Yeah, so we'd help him escape. But if he stays around, he's bound to be caught eventually. Yes, but he might not care. That's silly. Why should he want to escape if he doesn't care? Revenge. On who? You and me. How do we know what went through his mind when you told him about us? Locked up in that place with nothing else to think about, he might have planned this whole thing just to get even. Oh, Jeff. That's crazy. Yes, exactly. Make up your mind, Eve. We're dealing with a homicidal maniac. want me to help? No. us as guilty as he is. 
Yes, I know. What are you doing here, Annette? I heard a noise. Then I saw this light. I came to see what it was. You shouldn't touch that. It's dangerous. I didn't. I told you it was burning when I got here. Are you sure, dear? Of course I'm sure. What will I do with that? Come on, darling. We better go back to the house. So, what do we know? We know Georges Bernard escaped. And we know that he enlisted the aid of one of the staff. Without that aid, he could not have reached the wall. Now, when these two men climbed the wall, it was necessary that there should be a car waiting for them. They get in and drive, or are driven. Where? The docks. Why do you say the docks, monsieur? Well, it's natural if they wanted to get away. <laughs> You're thinking like a sane man. But remember, Bernard is insane. He still wanted to get away or he wouldn't have escaped. Ah, but why did he want to get away? A model inmate, by all accounts. Insane, yes. But obeying the rules, behaving himself, apparently quite contented within his mental limitations. What happened after four years that should suddenly make him want to escape? You visited him frequently, madame. Inspector, I told you all I know. Hmm. Something happened. Something that made it necessary for him to be on the outside. We must search for this something. Then we shall know where to find him. I don't know why you are telling me all this, Inspector. This would be the last place where he'd come back to. 
I have learned long ago to look in the last place first. It saves time. But there's nothing here for him. Nothing? His wife, his daughter, his home, you call these nothing? He's given them up four years ago. No, madame, he did not give them up. They were taken away from him. Remember that, please? They were taken away from him. And now perhaps he would he like to have something back. Ah, bonjour, mademoiselle. Inspector? And uh, you were going to say? Nothing. I'm sorry. Please, go on. But remember, madame, Georges Bernard is completely mad. I have spoken to his doctors, and they have told me he is without doubt the most dangerous man I have ever searched for. Please remember this. And should he try to contact you, or you, mademoiselle, I implore you, let me know. We will let you know, Inspector. Thank you. You are staying long in saint Girond, monsieur? Why? Just that it is necessary, after a while, to register with the local police. I'll remember that, Inspector, if I stay that long. Good day. Again, the telegram from father. Show me. From Arl? Let me see. The arena is Arl at 11 o'clock. Well, you're not going. Of course I'm going. Isn't it what we have all been waiting for? Well, you can't go, Annette. Who are you to tell me what I can or cannot do? If tell him. Tell him he can't order me about. Annette, I think you should do what he says. You might have to, but I don't. What happened? Why have you changed your minds? Darling, there are some things about your father we didn't tell you. No, I don't want to hear them. I'm going. And there is nothing either of you can do to stop me. I'm going to pack. Oh, Annette. I don't see how we can stop her. Oh, I'll take her into Arl tonight. At least I can see him, ask him some questions. I'll decide about her later. No, Jeff. I think it's better if I take her. Darling, I'll be all right. But he'll be less suspicious. He'd talk easier. And I'll know if there's anything wrong. You stay here, in case it's some kind of a trick, or if the police call again. Believe me, it's the best way. All right. I'll go and tell Annette. Darling. Hmm? You know that I love you, and I need you. Be careful tonight. I aimed at him. Twice I fired. Twice I missed. And twice the inspector from Marseille has been here and twice I've missed him. You'll be back. Do not misunderstand me, Monsieur Farrell. I have no desire to see him. He'll tell me my buttons are dirty, my uniform is not neat enough, and my record of arrests is non-existent. I don't think he's that kind of inspector. All inspectors are the same, Monsieur. This is the tenth time you've looked at that clock. You are worried about the time? No. The ladies, perhaps you are worried about them. Ladies? Madame and Mademoiselle Annette. Oh, I'm not worried. Why should I be? Why, indeed. There's no one here. It's open.
Can you see anyone? No. What time is it? It's well over 11. But he said 11 o'clock. Eve, I'm frightened. I do not know who is the bigger fool, Farrell. Eve or you? Her for thinking that I would stand by while she went off with another man? Or you for helping her? I am a wanted man. Everywhere I go, I should be looking back over my shoulder for the rest of my life. This I do not like. So, I have arranged that I shall die, here, now. This way, I will not be looking back over my shoulder anymore. But I'm supposed to be mad. So, I must behave like a madman. Hmm? <laughs> this person here, he helped me to escape from this island. We came here to hide, we quarreled, we fought, he was killed. But I am mad! So, I do not just bury him. Or throw him in the canal, as you did, monsieur. No, no. My diseased mind won't allow me to do that. No, no. I recreate the same crime that I committed four years ago. Eh? Hmm? This way... The police will nod their stupid heads and say it is a typical pathological pattern. These things can be very dangerous. If they're not handled carefully, then these cylinders, they can explode with devastating effect, which is what they are going to do. But later on, after I have used them, they will destroy this place completely. Nothing will be left except the wreckage and the remains of two bodies. The police will arrive and they will try to put these two bodies together. They will throw their hands in the air and they will say, he has done it again. The mad Bena has done it again, but this time he was too smart. The equipment blew up in his face. He's dead. No longer do we need to look for him. Eh? You see? Two men missing from the asylum. And two bodies found here. What makes you think I won't be missed? Oh, Eve will get a letter. You found the whole thing too much and went back to America. I think I would have killed you anyway, Farrell. I don't like people who take from me what is mine. <laughs> now at least your death will serve a purpose. Now to set the scene. 
first, I think we will burn him a little. And then we will arrange the explosion. I am afraid I will have to keep you tied to the cylinders for a while, but it won't be for long, I promise you. You needn't watch if it upsets you. What happened, Inspector? We found two bodies in the debris. Your husband, I'm afraid, was one of them. The other, the male nurse who helped him escape. It seems as though your husband was attempting to recreate the crime he committed four years ago. A typical pathological pattern. Then suddenly the equipment must have blown up in his face. He's dead. One of them is still alive. Burnt very badly, but still alive. I'm sorry, madame. It is impossible to tell which one it is. Where did they take him? The small hospital at Saint Lucien. But it would be pointless. But please, Inspector. It must be my husband who just said so. If you wish, I shall leave instructions. Now it would be better if you both go inside. Inspector, they are calling you on the radio. Ah. He was my father. But if he did kill that man that helped him, then it's for the best. It is, Eve. Eve? Eve, what is it? It was Jeff. What are you talking about? One of the two men in there it was Jeff. Why do you say that? Because I know it. The police think that because two men escaped from the asylum, those must be the two. But I know that the male nurse who helped your father escape is buried out on the Camargue. We did it ourselves, Jeff and I, miles away. So, if there were two men in that workshop, then one of them must be Jeff. Then how did the man last die? Your father killed him. And Jeff too, but why, why? Because he's insane! I was brought to the hospital. I must find her. But you don't know which one it is who is still alive. Might be father. Thank you. Jeff, 
I know it's you. It can only be you. Just as my husband and I had planned it. The other one was already dead, wasn't he? George brought him back from where you buried him on the canal. It was the only way he and I could be together. Now he's officially dead. No one is going to look for him anymore. He can go wherever he wants. You know what I have to do now, Jeff. I'm sorry I have to do it myself. I didn't want to. I may keep it, madame. If you wish. I don't suppose Mr. Farrell will be returning. It is strange him living like that without a word. I saw him that night. Oh, you did? When? While you and Miss Annette were in Arles. He seemed worried, I remember. He kept looking at the cafe clock. Mm. Well, I suppose he was worried about his train. Strange. Without a word to anyone. I hadn't thought of it, with all that happened. Oh, of course not. Such tragedy. But for the best, madame, I feel. I suppose you're right, Mr. Salon. Yes, well, I must go now. Goodbye, madame. Goodbye. This can't go on, Eve. What can't? This deception. We must ring the police. And tell them what? Everything about Jeff and that poor man being buried out there on the Camargue. There's too much being left unsaid about the whole thing. Listen, Annette. Do you think I'll ever be able to forget about Jeff? I really loved him, you know. But it's all finished now. What good would it do to tell them about the body out on the Camargue? They've accepted the fact of his death. Why resurrect it all? No, Eve. I'm going to tell the police. Very well. I think you're right, but not on the phone. You go over to the cafe and lock it. I'll ring Inspector Etienne and tell him you're coming over to see him. I'm sure it's for the best. I'll tell Gilles we won't be back till this evening. It's a long drive to Marseille, darling. How would you like to spend the night there? We can do some shopping tomorrow morning. I'd like that very much. All right. Then tell Gilles we won't be back until tomorrow evening, at the earliest. OK. All right. I told him to expect us when he sees us. Fine.
Yes? Yes, thank you. Attend here. The car has left. Report to me as soon as contact is made. They left home. Was that Gilles? Yes, Gilles. You know, he isn't as uh, simple as I thought he was. That night he dragged me out of the workshop after Baynot left all the equipment set to explode. He told me I wouldn't have been in this mess if I'd minded my own business. And he was right. Fortunately, he did not mind his business either. If he had not seen what he did that night, they would have got away with it. But remember, none of this would have happened if you had not conspired to help a criminal lunatic escape. I've already paid my penance for that. Well, allowing myself to be wrapped in bandages and stuck in the hospital. How did you know what method Eve was going to use to get rid of me? She could have slit my throat for all you knew, or cared. But it worked, did it not? Yes. Good. They're heading for Le Bois. May I come too? Yes, of course. Why are we going this way? I have something to do first. Will it take long? No. What are you doing? You'll see. What's happening, Eve? There's someone who wants to see you. To see me? What about? Shut up and get out. You heard her. Get out! Eve, please! Out! Eve, who is this man? Don't you recognize your father, my dear? My father? You're mad. Who is he? I am the man who helped your father to escape, my dear. Then what happened to my father? I killed him. He was dead before we even came over the wall, my dear. Now come on. What are you going to do? Anything I may have to do will be your own fault, my dear. Eve and I had the whole thing planned down to the last detail. We've talked about it now for two years, every time she came to visit that madman who was your father. If you had been content to let things lie, this wouldn't have been necessary. He would have joined me in a week or two, and everything would have been all right. Wouldn't it, Eve? She can't get out that way. Good.
It's a long way down, Annette. Annette, don't move. I'm coming up. Madame, 